Hello, my name is John, and today I'm in the cockpit of the L39C again. In this video, I want to show you how to navigate using the ADF system by using the NDB ground stations. First off, we will have to plan a route, because without a route, you cannot navigate. So for that, we will hop into the mission editor. Okay, here in the map, we see a brief route I planned. We will take off uh, at Batumi, and after takeoff, we will make a right turn over the sea. And we will directly head for the Coboletti NDB. And there we will fly to the outer NDB, which has a frequency of 870 kilohertz. After that, we will head for the Snaki. We will fly over the inner NDB, which has a frequency of 129 kilohertz. After there, we will do a sharp right turn. And we will directly head to Kutaisi, which has a only one NDB, which has a frequency of 477 kilohertz. And this is just a brief flight showing how the NDBs work. And um, you can basically use any map you like to plan your flight. For example, you can use the mission editor, which has the frequency displayed on it. You can use the pre-mission planning tool DCS provides. Or you can also use any external map. I will put a link or two into the description providing such maps if you'd like to check them out. Anyway, let's get back into the cockpit and get started. Okay, welcome back to the cockpit of the L39C. Before we take off, we will talk about a couple of controls and indicators you will need for this flight. Down here is the most important panel for this navigation tutorial. This is the main ADF control panel, and we will talk about that in a second. The most important indicator is down here on the main instrument panel, and it's the radio magnetic indicator. And it is the pointer used to ident identify the direction to the station. For example, if the pointer is pointing straight ahead, like now, the station is in front of us. If it's pointing 90 degrees to the right, station is 90 degrees to the right of us. If it's pointing to 270 on the left, station is to the left of us. I guess you get the concept. Also, on the front panel down here is the selector switch to which um, ADF channel you want. Generally, this ADF can only tune one station at once. You can either, because you only have one radiomagnetic indicator, you can t dial in one frequency and this needle will point to that. However, a lot of airports have two NDBs on one runway close to each other and those are used for an NDB approach. And it would be very cumbersome to dial in both frequencies or switch quickly between both frequencies. So the engineers built a panel with two frequency selectors here and um, the switch here serves as an option to switch between those. And if the switch in the left position, that's the outer channel, the outer dial here will be um, the active channel. If the switch is in the inwards position, the inwards dial will be selected. And whatever um, dial is illuminating, you will see that in a second, is active. So when the left dial is illuminating, this pointer will point to the station which has been dialed in on the left here, and vice versa. And also, an important control is the radio on the radio panel down here, we have the ADF switch. We want to turn that on so we can hear the noises the ADF device puts out in our headset. So, let's once return to the main ADF panel down here, and we have a different switch as I will talk you through. Up here on the right, we have the main mode switch. And we'll turn down the volume a bit. We have the main mode switch. You can switch between the C automatic mode, the C manual mode, the antenna mode, and the loop mode. The two main modes are the automatic mode and the manual mode. And there's only one small difference between the manual mode and the automatic mode is that in the manual mode, the stations will not automatically switch. For example, if you if you overfly the outer station of a runway, in the automatic mode it will automatically flip the switch, or it, uh, at least the indication will automatically flip to the inner channel. So if you fly the over station you don't have to flip the switch manually, it will do that for you. And in the manual mode it won't do that. You have to do that yourself. Then we have the audio switch, where we can select if we either want to hear the audio or we want to see the readout on the display down here. I will talk to the, about that once we are actually tuning in the frequency. Then up here we can hand off the control to the back cockpit or we keep it on the front cockpit, just the left position. 
And as already saw, you, here we can adjust um, the volume by turning this knob. Also, the last switch used on this panel is the left-right switch, where you can manually move the needle. As you see on the RMI, the needle is now moving because I'm holding down the switch. You, you use that in the manual mode, like in the antenna and the loop modes, but you also use that in the automatic mode. I'll talk about that in a second as well. Okay, now first we want to tune in a station. Uh, I will start with the auto station, auto station, and I want to tune in its frequency. And I know, as we have seen on the map before, the next waypoint's frequency, the NDB at Kubuleti, has a frequency of 870 kilohertz. So we'll turn in 08 or 800 on the outer scale. Then we'll move into the inner scale where we'll turn in 70. And as there, as there is no 10 digit, we will just uh, move that to zero. And now um, the outer station should have been selected. Now we can move the switch over and we can also dial in the inner station. As you can see, we barely see the inner scale is illuminating. Now we turn down the cockpit lights a bit. Should become more obvious then. Yeah, a bit at least, I guess. Anyway. Um, the waypoint after Koboletti is Senaki with a frequency of 129 kilohertz. The outer scale is already showing 100, so let me tune in 20, and we will move the 10th digit to the 9th position. Okay, perfect. And now we have both stations tuned. However, as you're on the ground, we can not receive any. So let me switch back over to the next waypoint, which is tuned on the outer station first. And as you can see, if I move the needle manually, it won't slew back to its heading because it cannot receive the station at this point. Also, this display is not showing any signal input. So we are too far away and uh, the Earth's curvature and buildings and obstacles, uh, obstacles are preventing the signal from reaching us. So we have to take off first and then try again with doing that. And that's one of the many disadvantages with uh, the NDB and ADF system. It's only visible line of sight. Other than that, it won't work. Anyway, let me take off and I will fast forward through that and we will talk again once we're in the air. Okay, now we're in the air, we reached a safe altitude, I now want to stabilize the climb a bit and uh, trim out the aircraft and I also reduce throttle a bit because we don't need to be powering along with full throttle. And now as you can see the RMI needle is still pointing straight ahead but because we looked out onto the map we know that um, this cannot be the right direction so we will probably have to fiddle a bit with the station tuning. And that's something you will have to do a lot with the NDBs, as they're quite inaccurate, unfortunately. And also the system um, might be a bit picky on the exact frequency. That's just how it was back in the day. Now we know the frequency is 870 kilohertz for the Kobuleti NDB, so let me adjust the tens digit a bit, or this, uh, the ones. And um, no, we cannot get any signal input on the panel over here. Let me retrim the aircraft a bit. And uh, you know what? I will put into active pause because um, all the talking and all the flying at the same time doesn't really help up. So, okay. We didn't get any um, input so far. However, we'll, we'll try a bit. We will move it down on the next 10th range. We will go down to 860. And we'll try again if we can get the signal out. Oh, there was something. Okay, let's check that if that is a signal we can. Okay, getting a lot of noise. Maybe if you're lucky, we might receive something. Okay, no luck so far. Okay, let's see. Let's go back to 817. That's the perfect frequency. And on this frequency, we should have no problem reaching uh, the station. Um, yeah. 
And that's a bit of a problem with uh, some of the NDB stations in DCS, and uh, I've encountered this a lot while trying to record this video, because uh, this is actually the fourth or fifth attempt, and I tried at different airports and different stations, and a lot of stations just uh, don't really work. So, well, not sure what's dependent on or based on, but some stations have the wrong frequency apparently, and some frequencies are very close together, making it a bit difficult. However, um, we can improvise. Um, and you probably will need to improvise if you try it yourself as well. And how to improvise? Well, basically, we'll just try to skip this station. So let's just move onwards to the next station, which is uh, the one at Sinaki, which has a frequency of 129. And let's see if we have any more luck with that. Um, not looking like it. However, that's not a worry, because we're quite uh, low altitude-wise. Just let me unpause and climb a bit further. And um, that's something unfortunate with the NDB and ADF system. It's very picky on uh, line of sight and uh, altitudes. And also, the frequency tuning can get very frustrating, because you're trying to fly, you should navigate, you should look out, and uh, it's quite hard to get uh, the right frequency sometimes, as you can see. Uh, which is unfortunate, but uh, the principle should work. This is working and I can definitely show to you on the Kutasi NDB because I definitely know that works because I checked it like three times However, I'm kind of disappointed or kind of baffled that it doesn't work on the other two NDBs Tried a couple of different ones and these don't work either. So um, Not sure what to do about that, but uh, let's continue climbing a bit No luck so far. No not looking at it. Like, let's try the one at uh, Cavoletti once more. And no, unfortunately we cannot receive uh, either of both NDBs, and I'm not sure if uh, what's that related to. And um, I will just make a right hand turn now, I don't want to fly too far offshore. Because the airport definitely won't be there. So um, let's turn a bit. Okay, that should be somewhat a plausible heading. And now, um, as we just did that, I can show you another dangerous thing or um, confusing thing with uh, the ADF system in this aircraft. Is that this needle is pointing now straight ahead, and you don't really know um, if you tuned uh, if it's now receiving the station or not. So what you can do is uh, you can try to slew it manually by clicking on the right or left movement button. And if it slews back to the center again automatically, you know the station is successfully uh, tuned and it will navigate towards it. If it's not slewing back like right, like right now, we know that the station is not reachable currently, or the frequency tuning is not perfect enough, so we can't reach it. Okay, now we're not having any luck with the station at uh, Coboletti. Let's try the one at Sinaki again. Okay, 129. That's 120 as you can see. There the 9. No, no, nothing at 129. Let's try 130. No, nothing at uh, 130 either. Oh man, that's a bit disappointing. I would really like to show you that, but um, I, I mean the principle works definitely. However, it um, a lot of the stations seem to be a bit uh, picky. Anyway, um, one final thing we can try, just to save this video a little bit, and just to so show you how it works, we can try the 477, uh, which is the frequency of the Kutaisi NDB, and that hopefully definitely works. If it doesn't work, you would not see the video. Okay, tune to frequency, and now let's switch over. And you can see the needle is directly moving. And um, if we try to deflect it, it will move back. And that means that uh, the station is, or the device is receiving the station, and we have tuned it. You can also know, now listen to the identifier. And you can hear the Morse code going off. You, if you can understand Morse code, you can probably identify it and get the ID. And a lot of maps also show the station identifier in Morse code, so you just don't have to know Morse code, but you can just, oh, long, short, long, long, 
And that's quite helpful. If you can get such a map or can a map with such uh, can get a map with such reading on readings on, I would definitely recommend that for DCS. Anyway, as you can see, now I'm just trying to bring the needle directly pointing forward, which put me should me put me on a direct uh, curse towards uh, Kutaisi. And we have the Kobaletti down there, and I'm just curious. I'm trying to tune that station once more and see if we can receive it from this distance. So check out if it's user error after all, or if it's... No? Just receiving static. Mm hmm. Strange. Because, um, as you could see, the NDBs are on the map, definitely, but uh, we <laughs> no way we can navigate to towards those. But I guess it might be because um, this is still open beta, and there's some... Stuff might may be wrong, but oh well. We just have to live with that what we have, don't we? Anyway, at this point I will fast forward again until we get closer to Kutaisi. And once we uh, once there, I just want to show you what happens when you overfly a station. I would like to have shown that to you on uh, on our route, but as you could see, the station on our route didn't really work. So, um, that's. I will have to show it once you're there. It's fortunately. Anyway, speak to you in a second. Okay. Um, welcome back to the actual real time progress. And um, we're currently just about to arrive at the Kutaisi NDB. And um, another problem with NDBs is that there is no distance readout. You don't know how far you're away from um, the station itself. The only notification of distance you get is once you overfly the station, the needle will make a 180 degrees turn. That's what we are looking for right now, because I would like to show you how it looks when you overfly the station. And the station, um, they are all they all have the buildings in DCS, and you can see the red light down there, and that's where the NDB station sits, just in the extent of the runway threshold. And once we overfly that point, you will uh, see the knee eagle doing, an, uh, doing a 180 degree turn, indicating that uh, we have overflown the station. And if we could have flown the route as I planned to, um, we, that would have been the point where we would switch to the next station. Once the needle turned 180 degrees, we would have switched onwards to the next station. And um, doing that by flicking that switch and then tuning the station after that again. Anyway, station flyover should come any second now. Station is down there, moving at 550 kilometers per hour, somewhere around that. So it should be quite soon to happen. And um, hopefully, here we go. Okay, you can hear, see the marker like blinking, meaning that we overfly the outer marker of the airport. Not relevant to our flight right now. And you can see the needle did a 180 degree turn because the station is now behind us. And uh, if the stations would work correctly in DCS, or which they aren't currently at the date of recording this video, um, you could use that technique on any NDB station on the map present. Currently you can't. Not sure what's the reason behind that, but I guess that's how it is in the beta version. If we were to navigate to the next station now, we would have tuned that in previously on the inner station selector here and we would flick the switch to the left, now enabling that navigation. And we'll, while we fly that leg to that station, we would tune the station after that here again. Once you fly that, switch over again, so on and so forth. I guess you can understand the principle. Anyway, although this video has been a bit disappointing because it didn't work as expected, or as promised, I guess. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it anyway, and I hope you could understand the concept of NDB navigation. If not, please feel free to ask in the comments. And if the demand is there, I will make another video once that stuff gets fixed, which is hopefully soon. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Have a safe flight and good luck navigating.